In today's episode we will be linking up this park entrance and the surrounding Brachiosaurus habitat with the rest of Jurassic Evergreen Park. Enjoy! And with that said, hey guys Legion here and welcome back to a new Jurassic World Evolution 2 speed build. In today's episode, as previously mentioned, I will be linking up the rest of our current park with the entrance. So basically of course the entrance is already linked up with the park because that is the way that you get into the park. But this entrance is special like you already saw in the intro. This entrance is basically a, a helipad where the guests arrive, surrounded with a big water terraces that actually cascade down. And they are surrounded by a bigger, a roundish sort of uh, designed Brachiosaurus and other herbivores habitat. And before that was just empty. And uh, now we're going to start on that habitat that will basically be a longer project. So the way that this park goes is that you go from the entrance and you go and the guests go around like the whole park sort of wraps around the entrance and that habitat and then it's going to loop around and end in the same area as the entrance started. So if you want to see how this whole park and the whole Brachiosaurus habitat surrounding the entrance turns out, subscribe to the channel if you're new and like the video to help me out with the algorithm and maybe even share the video and write a nice comment. But anyways, the Brachiosaurus habitat itself, I didn't really do anything in um, in this episode. I just placed down a couple of rocks um, with the random rock uh, thing, uh, put some terrain paint on the ground and uh, did a little bit of the foliage brush uh, just for uh, the thumbnail and cinematics um, so because I didn't want it to look completely bare um, and would just look weird. And I'm later probably going to decorate that probably off um, camera. It's not that interesting. But in some later episodes, we will probably have... Um, episodes you know focusing more on the brachiosaurus habitat and i'm also going to be tossing in some other herbivores in that habitat uh, probably like an edmontosaurus and um, some other herbivores the speed build for this episode picks up pretty much right where the uh, last one ended and that is at the little plaza that also looks into the allosaurus habitat with some viewing galleries and now we expanded that to have a, a big you know overview area for the brachiosaurus habitat it has like a little circle cut out then it goes deeper in there and in the middle of that I have placed some of my uh, herbivore, um, not herbivore, my sauropod feeders. That is basically a fun technique that I place down the um, foliage first uh, from the foliage brush that the uh, Brachiosaurus uses to eat from. And then I place um, one of the avu perches inside and that makes it look like a herbivore feeder, maybe something like you would see in a zoo used for giraffes. But cutting right through the middle of this plaza is the truck tour that goes through the entire um, tiger section or the entire redwood section that is now finished with three habitats the first one was the stegosaurus habitat the second one the allosaurus habitat and now the last one was an empty one and i decided to go with nezuto ceratops um, i got a f i asked you guys um, for species suggestions and i got a few different ones but the one that i liked the most was um, a ceratopsian and there were people suggesting nezuto ceratops so i went with that one and i think it fits quite well into the redwood forest theme Something that I did with the Nezutoceratops in this habitat and that I do with most of the dinosaurs in this park is that I try to give them um, female and male skins basically to pull off some sexual dimorphism and that means that um, usually the males are more brightly colored and um, just have brighter skins in general and the females are a little bit duller and have more sort of like brown and green tones and also don't really have any bold patterns on them. I feel like this makes especially a lot of sense for Ceratopsians because their frill designs are probably really elaborate, uh, elaborate designs just to attract, you know, the females. And uh, for that reason, the males would have like, a, you know, a very colorful uh, markings on their frill and the females wouldn't have that. So th I also try to reflect that in the skins. We have um, three or four female uh, Nasuto Ceratops and um, they also have like a green skin without a pattern and then there are two males one of them uh, they're both like purple from the base skin and one of them has um, a brownish pattern and one of them has a really uh, bright green pattern and it's basically uh, supposed to represent the alpha of the pack of the herd and um, that is like the alpha male and he has a brightly colored crest and the other male uh, hasn't got a fully developed uh, color in his, his crest yet because he's still you know a long, younger male and that means that he's still going to develop that and then soon take over the um, the pack and become the alpha male himself and I just think that's a cool little detail to throw in your parks for some more storytelling and you know I like doing that with my uh, skins for the dinosaurs. But yeah in general I'm pretty happy with this build I think the plaza in general looks really really cool uh, something that I did do off screen um, about this build is that um, this little uh, sort of groove or 
um, maybe a little cut through the plaza uh, where the trucks go. Um, I was bare bones before, it was completely empty and then I decided to line the track with rocks and then in between the track and the path I decided to put some of those plants, those tropical plants because they always look really nice and I used them in gardens in this park in general and I think it looks really really cool so I have the truck tour cutting through that. Um, so now the truck tour is fully complete. The reason that I even built a third habitat in this area was just because um, the truck tour had to loop and uh, that meant that it went to another em through another empty area, which normally in my parks I would have left empty, but now I decided to put another habitat in there um, because normally I don't like overcrowd overcrowding my parks with habitats, but um, for this little you know, area I decided to place more habitats in one area. Another short little thing I want to talk about is that Rob Earth, um, you know, uploaded his new episodes, his new speed build for his uh, DLC, um, sort of his park for the uh, Cretaceous DLC, um, which is, you know, a bit too late now, but um, it still was sort of released with that, but it's uh, his mountain park, and I think his new build in there looks absolutely incredible. It's for the Utah Renners, my favorite species in the game, so uh, naturally he uh, asked me uh, to give him some skin suggestions for those UTs. And I think that they look quite nice, the ones that I chose there. Um, I think the UT has some really nice skins. And he also mentioned me in this video, so I want to return that favor and give you guys a shout out for him. So if you want a nice uh, evolution builder who builds really nice nature, um, you can check out his channel. He also builds with mods, but I don't think that really det should deter you from you know getting inspiration for you if you're an unmodded builder. Because uh, you know I personally took a lot from that habitat and you know how to build nature, how to build beautiful habitats and he also builds waterfalls with the snow brush which you can also do in the unmodded game. So for that reason I want to discuss with you guys um, you know some possible pack ideas and some possible creatures you want to see in the game in the future. Um, I think the most likely thing for us to get in the next pack will be a Cretaceous herbivore pack or, I, or maybe a you know flying species pack for the aviary species. Um, those two would make a lot of sense since before we had a um, marine species pack so basically the opposite and you know hand in hand pack for that would be a flyer uh, flying species pack and we also got the Cretaceous predator pack and a pack to go hand in hand with that would be a Cretaceous herbivore pack. I personally would um, prefer a Cretaceous herbivore pack since we already have, in my opinion, a good selection of pterosaurs in the game. Of course, I would like to see like a Hetzogopteryx or some other new species, but I think that can wait. And I would, um, you know, instead of getting a flying species pack, I would like to get um, them in some other DLCs. Um, so I think that a herbivore pack would be a lot more beneficial for the game because uh, the last time we really got a herbivore in a pack that wasn't. Um, an omnivore or the like the little small Lystrosaurus, which um, the uniqueness about that is really that it's a synapsid. Um, the last time we got that was in the late Cretaceous pack, which was now um, over a year ago. So um, I think we're for sure overdue for some herbivores since also that herbivore was a uh, sauropod. So I think we really need uh, some new herbivores. Um, some examples for that would be, of course, Microceratus, and that is a species still missing from the Jurassic franchise and especially like the movies and Jurassic World Dominion, which is um, the movie that this game released with. Um, so we for sure probably need um, Microceratus because you know it's Cretaceous, it's a herbivore. We should get it. And some other species, in my opinion, would be a new Ceratopsin because I think we need more Ceratopsins in the game. They are really cool, and I think we only have like three maybe even four really good ceratopsins in the game, like the Storacosaurus, um, the, um, the Pachyrhinosaurus, the Taurosaurus, and um, the Nesutoceratops from this video as well. So uh, something like the Alberta Ceratops would be really cool, and I've seen people also request that, and I personally would really be uh, very happy with getting some herbivores, especially some ceratopsians. And another species we could see is like a Titanosaurus, a, a Titanosaur, like the Argentinosaurus or the Titanosaurus itself, or maybe like a new Pterosinosaur, like the Elicosaurus or something like that. But I'm not gonna ramble on about this uh, for too long now, since the video is not that long and it's coming to an end, to an end now. 
Um, but if you want me to talk about some species I want in the game and future DLCs, just let me know down below in the comments and I will maybe do a video on. But with all that said, we've now reached the end of today's speed build and now we're in the cinematics. I hope you guys like the build as much as I do. I'm really a big fan of the plaza and how that turned out. I really like the you know little feeding feature for the uh, the little feature where you can look at the feeders for the sauropods. And it really reminds me of like giraffes in a zoo. And um, there was like a zoo that I was to where you could get really close to uh, the giraffes and you know really close to that feeder. It was like hanging there. Um, especially what I like about this plaza is also it being separated with the tour track and then um, those plants in there. Um, then I think it's really nice that we're getting around now to the entrance. Um, I think that entrance is one of the best ones I've ever built and it's a cool idea with the surrounding habitat so that when the guests arrive they can look over that and you know see their first dinosaur in the distance and that being a Brachiosaurus. And also the habitat is quite nice I really like the Nezutoceratops. So um, I'm gonna leave you guys with the rest of the cinematics and hope you enjoy, hope you like the build. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.